Hey fan, it's me Aaron for a comic show. It's been a week of like great announcements. Um, personally, I, we found out that uh, my wife and I are having a baby boy uh, who I want to name Justice League Holland, like JL for short, but Justice League Holland, my wife's okay with his first name being Justice. She doesn't like the idea of Justice League. I was like, what about Justice Lee? So I could still do like, hey JL, but we'll see, I'm working on it. Um, for the comic shop Geek Easy, I am now sole owner of the Geek Easy. Again, I, have, uh, I had business partners in the Geek Easy and I've bought them out. So now Comic Shop Geek Easy is gonna be one unified thing, kicking ass. I made our head bartender, Adam, the dude running the whole Geek Easy, just like Eric runs the comic shop. And um, it's gonna go really smooth. And uh, with Marvel, they made this huge announcement of the end of the Marvel Universe. And um, the first thing is, oh, that's like DC's reboot of the New 52. And I really don't think so. I think it's, obviously it's Secret War. So it's their Secret Wars where all their different stuff is fighting and all their different realities are fighting and the best of everything is gonna go into melting pot and become the new Marvel Universe, which sounds exactly like Christ on Infinite Earths. Where DC, there's a whole lot of, you know, the, the narrative is that DC had this convoluted um, continuity, so they had to do this Christ on Infinite Earths to streamline the continuity. When Crisis on Infinite Earths did streamline some, but created other problems. Like created problems like, well, now Wonder Woman didn't start in the Justice League. She just started right then. And uh, oh, there's a new Hawkman, Hawk World. Well, who was the Hawkman in the JLA or JLI after um, after Crisis? And you know, it's really what Crisis and Nurse was. DC had bought these other properties from Charlton and Quality and um, and. Captain Marvel and all that, Captain Marvel, Plastic Man, Blue Beetle, and they wanted to put all these different characters on one world where they had one unified branding where they could sell those properties they had all to the readership and not have, well, this is Earth X where uh, Plastic Man is and the Nazis won and blah, 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 blah. But I like the idea of this big battle royale in the melting pot and Marvel has not let me down in the ways they have done their um, continuity and the way they've done their crossovers. And their continuity has had retcon after retcon because times change and uh, these characters don't age. I don't know if you noticed that, but these characters don't age and time change, so I'm excited about it. And we've, we're getting these great story arcs before, like what we're getting in Avengers and uh, Spider-Verse. Spider-Verse is every Spider-Man that's ever been from every different reality all together. And in this book, there's a reality where Uncle Ben got bitten by the spider. And with great power came great responsibility and a lot of like crap. And there's just stuff in here between Peter, Ben, and uh, Octavius, Superior Spider-Man, Spider-Man, that just such great writing, so perfect. This is the penultimate issue of Spider-Verse. It is just kicking so much ass. Um, some characters from this issue go into this issue. Uh, obviously, they're the other Spider-Women characters, and that was awesome. And then the... Um, last team up book was here, which um, has a spider girl reunion. And um, the person blacked out here is insanely cool. And I'm not going to mention that. But hey, get that. Why not? Um, Gardens of the Galaxy. There's been a lot of Gardens of the Galaxy news with them crossing over with the X-Men for the Vortex and all that. Look at this cover, though. This is like Christian Ward from um, Infinite Vacation. So beautiful. You know, it looks like kind of like David Mack, but awesome. Well, this issue, everything about the symbiotes kind of changed and we know that the symbiotes aren't actually this um, evil thing that people that like bikers and tattoos and big tongues sticking out of venoms and crazy serial killer carnages that there's actually a lot more to the symbiotes and their symbiote planet and who they are as a race and maybe we've only been introduced to the worst parts of their race so this is very flash thompson heavy and it was awesome Rock Raccoon also came out, new story arc, Rocket and Group. That book is killing it, love it. Superior Iron Man, him and Daredevil still having it out. And um, yeah, that, this, this issue was awesome. And The Wolverines, issue three is the best issue so far. Charles Soule is killing it on this. Um, yeah, it's a weekly book with you know the body snatchers of Wolverine's body and these, all these characters that are related to Wolverine or legacy of Wolverine, all that stuff, but it's very fast paced and have that for a weekly is awesome. Uh, most weeklies feel a little padded. So far, I know it's only been three issues, I know, but the third issue is the best issue yet, so that's awesome. 
Moving over to DC for Batman and Robin, issue 38 is out, and yes, Damien is back with superpowers, and it's hilarious. Like, seriously, this is awesome. Uh, he teams up with Aquaman in here. That went pretty well. Uh, he and Aquaman kind of have similar attitude, similar, like, arrogant, regal, you know, legacy type of things, and um, it was cool. I'm excited to see more of Batman dealing with having a son who's superpowered when he's always been standoffish and paranoid of those with superpowers. Um, but he's always made excuses for his son, so, and broken rules for his son. Uh, Just League's out, craziness, the uh, virus, more stuff happens with Lex Luthor, we find out what caused the virus actually. Of course Lex Luthor lied, of course he didn't tell us the whole truth. It comes out this issue, and it's awesome. And Wonder Woman 38, you guys know how much I like the previous Azarello Chang Wonder Woman. You know, I've been really hard on this new um, run with Finch and Finch, the Finches. This cover, when I first saw it solicited, I was like, yes, this is awesome. She doesn't look like a blow-up doll. She looks like a badass. She looks like a god of war. And they reminded us, like, you could do a drinking game with this book and drink every time god of war is mentioned, and you would be on the floor by the time you got to page 20. But having said that, I kind of enjoyed this book, and there was no way I wasn't going to read it after the Donna Troy revelation from last issue. Spoiler, I give spoilers from previous issues. I won't spoil the actual issue, but if it happened the previous issue, yeah, Donna Troy's here. Awesome, cool, you got my attention. Yeah, that, this issue also? Okay, cool, let's see this God of War stuff. Um, indie, Icon, Bendis, Powers, relaunched with a new number one, and it's highly promoting their original series coming in February on PlayStation. There's plenty of stuff about that in here, but this book is totally accessible. It's awesome. It's, uh, you don't have to have read any of the backstory of Powers. If you want to, go back and do it. It's all good. But that's what I was mainly looking for, where Powers Bureau, the last relaunch, kind of was highly dependent on, well, this is all different than what it was before. And, eh, you know, whatever. I couldn't really hook people on it. But this, obviously, he's going after new readers because he has a freaking TV show now. And this was awesome. And I remember buying Powers number one on a whim at Star Clipper Comics in uh, St. Louis, Missouri, back in, like, 2000. And I was just, oh, this looks cool. Neat. And, yeah, people can do that now with this Powers and enjoy it. I mean, they just are only buying it because it's a TV show now, but I'll take what I can get. Uh, the Autumn Lands, Tooth and Claw 3. This book is one of my most favorite New Image books. Seriously, solid writing by Kirk Busick, and um, this art is really the selling point. If you had no idea who this writer was and just flipped through this, you'd probably be interested. And what I like the most about this um, kind of fantasy, magic, uh, anthropomorphic world is that uh, they have this champion, this great champion type of savior, messiah, if you will, that they conjure up as the second coming. They use their magic to bring him back, and they've always argued what kind of animal he was, and it turns out he's a human. Like, you should know this from the hints, all the clues on issue one. You know it outright in issue two. Issue three delves into that so much. Um, it's really not a secret. Even from issue one, you should know. But it's brilliant, and some of it's like, huh, I, I, are all these great stories about great heroes and champions all people that really didn't want that title or that stuff at the time, but just kind of did what they had to do and people want a leader to follow? Uh, it's, it's a really great book. I love it. Uh, Cross Plus 100, Alan Frickin' Moore, even if you've never read any Cross and never want to read any Cross, this is a book for anyone that likes the idea of a post-apocalyptic type of world where... 100 years after that, 100 years after the inciting incidents of the apocalypse happens, no one alive was living in the pre-apocalyptic world. And what would their view be of our world that we live in now? That, because our view of history is they're all like dumbasses. Like, oh, you can't go to school with black people. What are these stupid ass people? You know, whatever. And of course, you know, people be like, what? Gay people couldn't marry? What are you, retarded? But this is like, why did people even do art? What is this poetry shit? We have to like run our whole life to escape these crazy cross zombie weirdos. Why 
does art even exist? Why poetry? How are there even obese people? It, we have to run every second of our life or we're dead. So these are the type of things that Alan Moore tackles in this book, and it's awesome. <laughs> Valiant, uh, Time Walker, great cover, and uh, I love this character. Uh, you can read this without knowing anything about um, where he's appeared in Archer and Armstrong or, or that he's the brother of the Eternal Warrior. It's just a, a fun time travel story that was fast paced and seems like it's gonna have a whole lot of payoff. Uh, Millennium, Joe Harris, I knew he was gonna do this book when he was doing X-Files, everything hinted at it. Uh, Cap from Nerdy Show told me, hey, uh, there's a character in his X-Files that only actually appeared in Millennium. I think the Millennium characters are in play. It's obviously a shared universe. I think he's gonna do Millennium. I confronted him about it at San Diego Comic-Con. He was very, very coy with me, but you know, couldn't help but smirk and whatnot. And, it's out, it's awesome. It takes place right before Y2K, right in that millennia fever. And Mulder's in this first issue. They're swinging for the fences. If you liked Millennium, absolutely get it. If you're liking the X-Files by Joe Harris, absolutely get it. If you were ever curious about Millennium, seriously get it. Uh, if you even just like the Pixies, get it, because Frank Black. But anyway, I really like the book, and Nerdy Show did a whole interview with um, Joe Harris that we can link to. And uh, Transformers Punishment, this book is, it's prestige format, it's extra sized, it's six bucks, it's pretty brilliant, and the whole thing feels like um, a whole thing for Black Lives Matter, like Decepticon Lives Matters. And I'm not, Prime actually says at one point, like, when Starscream's like, oh, there's dead Autobots now, people are gonna care, and Prime goes, all lives matter. <laughs> it's, Okay, maybe it's a little bit heavy-handed, but at least it's dealing with really weighty issues with robots. You got me with that. I loved it. And um, finally, in, you know, it's Martin Luther King Day was just Monday. Black History Month's coming up. The March book two is out, finally. Uh, I think it was like two years ago I got book one at um, San Diego Comic-Con. I actually met Congressman John Lewis, who is, I think he's the only living person that was there to, that spoke at the um, I Have a Dream speech where King spoke. He's the only other person. He was very young at the time, but that actually spoke that day that's still alive. Um, I could be wrong. I'm often wrong. I don't think I am. But this book was brilliant. I, it's just, it's, it shows what comics can do, and it's going to be remembered like all those great comics like uh, Mouse and, and whatnot. This is super solid, great art, amazing story, a very important work, but also an engaging, dare I say, fun read, even though it's so like, ugh, like, I can't believe my people did this. Like, seriously. Like, I wish I could go back in time, time travel, just to beat the shit out of, like, uh, racist white people. Like, I, I understand nonviolence. This whole book is about nonviolence. I obviously didn't learn, but, yeah, that's kind of how I feel. Thanks, guys. Bye-bye.